Hello, I'm John Anderson, the Curator of Aerodynamics at the National Air and Space Museum of the Smithsonian Institution, and also Professor Emeritus of Aerospace Engineering from the University of Maryland. We are located in a special gallery on the second floor of the Air and Space Museum called the Inventing Flight Gallery. Uh, it is the gallery where you can walk in and get up close and personal to this flying machine right here. This is indeed the original 1903 Wright Flyer, the first heavier than air, powered, piloted, and totally controlled flying machine in history. Beginning in 1900, the Wrights started to design gliders. They had the idea that it was important to get up in the air, learn how to fly before putting an engine on their flying machines. And so their first effort in 1900 was to design a glider. We have a replica of that glider, and this glider was not very successful. They thought they had done everything properly, and they found that this glider produced only half as much lift as they had calculated. What would you do if you had a glider and it wasn't producing enough lift to get you off the ground? Most, natural, most likely, you would go back and build one twice as big. And that's what the Wright brothers did. And they came back down to Kitty Hawk in 1901 with a glider that looked very much like this, but essentially twice as large. The 1901 glider, which we don't have a replica of here, still had the same problem. It only produced about one-third the amount of lift that they calculated on the basis of the best available aerodynamic data of the day. Now this was totally frustrating to them, but not for very long. The Wright brothers built a wind tunnel, tested some small little wing models of different shapes, uh, different airfoil shapes, different wing shapes, and so forth. And they learned, they acquired what for them was good aerodynamics. And as the most important result from those wind tunnel tests, they were able to design a new glider, which they tested in 1902. That, a replica of that 1902 glider is there and it looks a lot different than the 1900 glider. Why does it look a lot different? What's going on here? I'm holding in my hand two pieces of cardboard that represent airplane wings. This one is more like the 1900 glider we were looking at. This one is more like the 1902 glider that we were looking at. This is called a lower aspect ratio wing. This wing, this shape has a lower aspect ratio. This has a higher aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is simply this. You measure the length from one wing tip to the other wing tip, it's called the wingspan. You take that length and divide it by the length from the front to the back of the wing, that's called the cord. And the ratio of the wingspan to the cord length is called the aspect ratio that holds for a rectangular wing. They both have the same wing area you would think that they both would produce the same lift. And they don't. This one produces less lift than this one, even though they have the same wing area. Why? I want you to imagine that this wing is flying through the air, that there's an airflow over this wing. The wing is generating lift. The lift is coming from a higher pressure exerted on the lower surface of the wing and a lower pressure exerted on the top surface of the wing. So you have higher pressure here, lower pressure there, presto, you have lift. So if you're the airflow coming in, what's gonna happen to you? You're gonna try to curl around from the high pressure region underneath to the lower pressure on top. And that's what happens. So the airflow flows over the wing tip, acquires a circulatory motion like a vortex motion, like a little mini tornado, this changes the pressure in such a way as to decrease the lift and increase the drag. It's just a physical fact. So these wingtip vortices decrease the lift and increase the drag. Now, how would you tend to uh, mitigate that effect? Well, take these wingtips and stretch them out further away. And this gives rise, and I'll show you that, the, this gives rise to a smaller effect. I have now here a piece of cardboard where the length is longer 
the wingtip vortices are further away from the center of the wing. And so for this shaped wing, the lift is not decrease quite so much and the drag is not increased quite so much. This is what the Wright brothers discovered. And so when they designed their 1902 glider behind me, they designed much higher aspect ratio wings on the glider. To be specific, the 1900 glider had an aspect ratio of 3.4. This glider behind me, the 1902 glider, has an aspect ratio of 6.7, almost twice as large. And that is the single most important result from the wind tunnel tests carried out by the Wright brothers was their learning about the major influence of aspect ratio. The 1902 glider was very successful and because of that success, the Wright brothers knew that they were close to developing a successful powered machine. This is the machine that we see here. And it represented the beginning of powered flight, the beginning of the air age, and the beginning of the field of aeronautical engineering. The Wright brothers were the first true aeronautical engineers.